As the 20th century unfolded, the airwaves became alive with the sound of music, news and advertising. Welcome to the golden age of radio, a time when advertising found its voice and changed the way we listen to the world. Radio advertising started simple. It was about announcements, straightforward product description, but it quickly evolved. Advertisers realized that radio had the power to tell stories, to create images in the mind of the listeners. Soon, entire programs were sponsored by brands. Procter & Gamble, for instance, became synonymous with soap operas, a term that still resonates today. And who could forget the catchy jingles? Coca-Cola's I'd like to buy the world a Coke wasn't just a song. It was an anthem of its time. With me. Storytelling became an art. Advertisers weren't just selling products. They were selling dreams, aspirations. A coffee brand wasn't just about the beans. It was about the warmth of family gatherings. A car advertisement wasn't just about the vehicle. It was about the freedom of the open road. We can, for example, mention the Wheaties breakfast, which brought popularity to cereals for breakfast. In the 1930s, they coined the slogan the breakfast of champions and features that lead which boosted the sales dramatically. Take it from Bruce Jenner, Wheaties is the breakfast of champions. Another unforgettable example of a campaign was the Pepsi Cola Eat the Spot jingle of the 1940s, a catchy tune that quickly became synonymous with the brand. Pepsi Cola Eat the Spot, 12 ounces, that's a lot. Brands began to leverage celebrity endorsements, understanding the power of a familiar voice. When a bill of radio star recommended product, it wasn't just an ad, it was a trusted friend's advice. That a report, unconfirmed by allied sources, of course. And radio also played a crucial role during World War II. Public service announcements and ads encouraged support for the war effort. It was advertising, yes, but it also was a unifying force bringing nations together in a time of need. Moving to a more serious note, radio played a pivotal role during World War II. It wasn't just about advertisements or entertainment. It was a crucial tool for communication and propaganda. For instance, the BBC used radio broadcasts not only to boost morale at home, but also to send coded messages to Allied forces and resistance fighters in occupied Europe. In the US, President Roosevelt fired side chats were instrumental in rallying public support and keeping spirits high. These broadcasts were more than just messages. They were a lifeline connecting people during some of the darkest days of the war. As we tune out from the golden age of radio, we see a legacy that goes beyond products and jingles. It was a time when advertising found its voice and learned to speak directly to the heart. It set the stage for what was to come, a new era where images would join words as television took center stage. As the radio era dimmed, a new light flickered in living rooms across the world. Television, a marvel of the modern age, bringing not just sound but sight into the art of advertising. Television changed everything. It wasn't just about hearing a product now. You could see it, feel its presence in your living room. This visual revolution opened up a new realm of creativity for advertisers. Iconic campaigns took flight. The Marlboro Man transformed a cigarette brand into a symbol of rugged American individualism. Volkswagen's Think Small campaign turned advertising on its head, using honesty and humor to sell the Beetle. And Coca-Cola's Hilltop ad, it was more than a commercial. It was a cultural phenomenon. Television also amplified the power of celebrity endorsements. Stars were no longer just voices on the radio. They were faces in our homes. And with product placement, brands found their way into our fairy TV shows, blurring the lines between entertainment and advertising. But with great power comes great responsibility. Television advertising faced its share of controversy, from debates about the ethics of marketing to children, to the portrayal of gender and race. TV ads were a reflection of societal values and catalysts of change. Welcome to the 1960s, an era that redefined the advertising industry. This was the age of Mad Men, a term that later came to symbolize the advertising giants of Madison Avenue, known for their creative genius and sometimes controversial tactics. It was a creative revolution. Advertisers weren't just selling products, they were selling ideas, lifestyle, dreams. Campaigns like Think Small for Volkswagen and its toasted for Lucky Strike cigarettes broke the mold, 
using wit, irony and bold visual to capture the public imagination. Storytelling took center stage. Ads became mini-dramas, comedies and slices of lies that resonated with the audiences. They weren't just about the product, they were about the experience, the emotion, the identity that came with it. This era also saw advertising begin to challenge and reflect societal changes. The women's liberation and civil rights movement found echoes in commercials, gender and race in advertising. But with creativity came controversy. The line between persuasive and deceptive advertising was often blurred. Questions arose about the ethics of subliminal messaging, the targeting of vulnerable audiences and the promotion of unhealthy products. The tobacco industry's ads, like the Marlboro Man, glamorized smoking despite growing health concern which led to public outcry and eventually strict regulations. The use of subliminal advertising in movie theaters in the 1960s experimented with flashing messages like drink Coca-Cola during films, sparking a debate about subconscious persuasion. In the 1960s, Coca-Cola found itself at the center of a scandal that would forever change the perception of advertising. Imagine sitting in a movie theater, absorbed in the film, when suddenly, for just a fraction of a second, a message flashes on the screen. Drink Coca-Cola or hungry, eat popcorn. These subliminal messages were so brief, they bypassed your conscious awareness, but the implication was that they could subtly influence your buying decisions. This experiment, later revealed as a morph marketing stunt, without solid evidence, sparked a nationwide debate. It raised serious questions about the ethics of advertising, particularly the idea of manipulating consumers on a subconscious level. The impact of the scandal was profound. It led to a heightened scrutiny of advertising practices, stirring both public concern and regulatory action. By 1974, the Federal Communication Commission declared such subliminal tactics against public interest, threatening broadcasters with license revocation for their use. This incident didn't just make headline, it reshaped the landscape of advertising, highlighting the fine line between persuasion and manipulation. And then there were also ads targeting children. Sugary cereals and toys were marketed directly to kids, raising questions about the impact of advertising on young, impressionable minds. All of these are flagrant examples of how far advertising has gone during that period. As we leave the Madman era, we see its lasting impact. This was a time when advertising became a mirror of society, reflecting its aspiration and its conflicts. It set the stage for the modern advertising world, where creativity, ethics and social responsibility continue to intertwine. The journey from print to radio, then television, has been transformative. But as we will see in our next episode, the digital age brings new frontiers. The internet and social media are about to change the game again, making advertising more personal, more interactive and more pervasive than ever. Join us as we explore the digital revolution in advertising. How did the internet and social media reshape the art of persuasion? Find out in our next episode.